Kane and Louis' first full-length of performance took place in 1978. Ceremony for Freeway Fets was a public art project supported by a CETA grant and sponsored by the Black-owned Rockman Gallery, along with Caltrans, the Los Angeles Transportation System. The one-time event took place under a section of the freeway near the convention center. A small orchestra composed of students and artists played saxophone, flute, drums, and other less traditional instruments. Nearly all participants were equipped with a form of Mangudi sculpture. Mangudi, Hammonds, and Maren Hassinger provided the work's major movement and most elaborate wearable art. Ceremony for Freeway Fets shares certain aesthetic conventions with West African masquerades. For instance, there is a crew of masked performers, some in full body gear. Nanguti's version of her wearable sculpture culminates in a crown that appears to be placed on top of the head, calling to mind the elaborate wooden superstructures found in Nigerian Gelide masquerades, among others. In many African productions, the actual faces of the performers are covered with mesh or folds of fabric. The object that spins in Nanguti's hand finds a comfortable analogy in the fly wisps and other items often carried by African masqueraders. So you can see, you know, the kind of how the face coverings um, here uh, over Hammonds' face, Marin Hassinger in the middle, and also Nanguti, kind of, particularly with Hassinger, uh, kind of really link up with this one here with the Gallaudet uh, masker. And here's the fly whisk in uh, the masker's hand here. And here you can see in these uh, pantyhose and sand fly whisk. Um, so you can see how this formally it links up. Galilee yeah, masquerades, and, and also, you know, just want to point out also the uses of the fabric in the kind of body costume as well. Galilee uh, yeah, masquerades pay homage to and appease female power. Traditional Yoruba societies are patrilineal, yet women are seen as having great metaphysical power on par, sometimes even greater than that of deities. As with many African masking traditions, Gelade is a way to maintain harmony in the society's social dynamics or village structure. <coughs> Yet formally, Nanguti's own costume in particular shares more in common with another type of Yoruba masquerade form called Egungu. And you can see here uh, with the agungu, um, yeah, the kind of fabric body you have here, the fabric here of the costume. And you know, there's no um, kind of wooden carapace here. Uh, as you can see with the Gelade, it's all fabric. And people are, the masters are looking through that kind of black and white striped area. You see this little top knot. So you can also see how that relates to um, her costume as well. The Bungu masquerades celebrate the ancestors and regulate relations between the living and the dead. As John Pemberton has noted, ancestors are present in all human affairs of the Yoruba. They are always hovering on the edges of earthly life, communicating through dreams and divination and masquerade. And as Zoe Strother has wonderfully suggested about Pende, Central African masking traditions, quote, as a church constitutes an agreed-upon site of contact for Christians between the physical and metaphysical realms, so the masks create a liminal space in which the worlds of the living and the dead may be superimposed. The mask's presence reminds the living of the invisible family members dancing alongside. Indeed, as Marin Hassinger has recounted about her participation in ceremony for freeway fets, um, there was something incredibly African about it, a kind of timing with lulls and surprise bursts of energy that she associated with West African dance and theatrical tradition. For Nanguti, the cloistered space underneath the freeway had a rural feel. With its few trees and transients, in her mind she conjured an African village. This image of the Ubuntu masquerader appeared In um, sorry. this image of the masquerade, <laughs> uh, on the right, appeared in the magazine.
Magazine African Arts in April 1978, published out of the University, University of California, Los Angeles. Nanguti's performance took place the same year, yet in March, thus discounting her direct influence by this particular example. The exhibition African Art in Motion was curated by Robert Ferris Thompson for White Art Gallery of UCLA in 1974. Though Nanguti was living in New York at that time, she may have been inspired by another version of the Boom Boom Regalia seen in the show's catalog and the spinning image at the right. And this was the image from that catalog. It was another Boom Boom Masquerade. And then there was Japan. Curiosity about Asian art and philosophy eventually led Nanguti she spent 1966 and 67 in Tokyo, where she studied at Waseda University in the interval between her undergraduate and graduate years at California State University, Los Angeles. She was particularly fascinated with the work of the Butai Art Association, whose unorthodox objects and exhibitions would provide important models. Formed in 1954 in the Kansai region, Osaka, Kobe, Kyoto, during the mid to late 50s, Butai experimented with materials such as mud, water, fabric, and air, as well as the incorporation of time in exhibitions that were held outdoors, in theaters, as well as in traditional exhibition spaces. Butai is generally translated into English as embodiment, and it is this sense of the work with artists involving their bodies in art making that attracted Nanguti. For as many screens of paper of 1956, for instance, Saburo Murakami literally made action paintings by crashing through parallel canvases of brown paper. The resulting tears were the mark making. But if Murakami's works are among the most iconic in the West, it is the formal structure of pieces by others, such as Asuko Tanaka, that may have had an even greater impact on him. Tanaka's electric dress of 1956, a wearable artwork from common light bulbs and neon tubes, is an example. As worn by Tanaka, it is an encumbrance with the artist literally wired up and stationed at the power source. Ming mm -hmm. 1976 piece encasing Mary Hassinger and mooring her to the wall surface comes to mind. And you can see the comparisons there. In Japan, Nanguti broadened her knowledge of Japanese theatrical traditions, becoming more familiar with no kabuki and buto, and taking private art and dance classes. At the roots of these forms was shamanic trance, which was performative, public, and provided dramatic structure. Low dancing with the orientation of the hips to the ground and crouching positions are valued in no performance, as well as much traditional Japanese dance characteristics shared with African custom. No's use of masks is also significant, for while these shows have no directors, a mask will suggest how the role should be enacted. The rest of the costume follows, and of great importance here is an elongated sleeve which accentuates the expression of the dance. We can certainly connect this with Nanguri's flowing robe in ceremony for freeway fets. Perhaps the most fascinating link between Nanguni's performance and that of ancient Japan is the act of performing while holding objects in one's hand, seen in Nanguni's graphs of her pantyhose sculpture as well as Hammond's building of his staff. The fan is an omnipresent prop in traditional Japanese theater arts because of its link to shamanic tradition. As an object, it replaced the sacred branch or spear, the place the deity inhabited during ritual trance. As a number of scholars have shown us, Asia and Asia America have been important to African American understandings and workings of discursive notions of race. On the West Coast in particular, this multiculture was not only local and national, but recognizably part of a larger international community, thus contributing to the sense of race in a broader world. Historically, we can point to the parallelisms of forced labor of African Americans and indentured servitude of Chinese and Indians in the Americas of the 19th century. In 20th century Los Angeles, Japan and Japanese American culture present a similar coefficient profile. 
Like African American migrants to 20th century Los Angeles, we find the importance of the role of secondary migration with Japanese moving to Hawaii and other parts of California before heading to Los Angeles. African American and Japanese and eventually Japanese Americans lived in close proximity, proximity in the inner cities. African Americans were soldiers in wars with Asia, beginning in Japan but extending to Korea, where Noah Purifoy and John Otterbridge served, China, Vietnam, Cambodia, and Laos. Along the West Coast, African Americans inherited Japanese neighborhood, empty, neighborhoods empty by internment. <coughs> South Asian support of anti-colonial struggles, struggles after 1947, and the ban on conference of non-aligned nations in 1955 that also demonstrate Afro-Asian connections as sites of parallel history and mutual support. Along with the emergence of independent African countries, China comes into view as a world power. Vietnam's struggle for self-determination were inspirations to a generation of U.S. citizens supporting anti-war and third world liberation movements. If Asia is a signpost for African American freedom dreaming in the 20th century, groups like the Black Panthers, themselves inspired by Chinese communism, stimulated the U.S. multicultural left and the formation of groups such as the Young Lords, the Brown Berets, the Red Guard Party, and Students for a Democratic Society. Much was shared there in the will to re release oneself from the stranglehold of European social, political, and aesthetic power. In this context, it was not surprising that Asia and Asia America would form an integral part of Nanguti's aesthetic constellation. Nanguti's Afro-Asian experimentations seem more possible in the Western United States. With its Pacific coast facing the whole of Asia, California had a substantial history of embracing Asian aesthetics, certainly in ceramics and paintings, from uh, Sergeant Johnson and Ken Price to John McLaughlin. Nanguti thus followed a West Coast tradition. In the example of Nanguti and others here, we see people of African descent actively transforming racial meanings to produce new subjectivities in the cultural sphere. We witness the impact